Berlin Blockchain Week. This time with the guys from Fortis. So Fortis. Fortis. With a P. Yes. That's what happens when we don't sleep on a hackathon. So. No, just constant mate to keep you going. <laughs> awesome. So this is Scott. Hello. Yeah. And this is Tom. Hi. And uh, which one of you would like to introduce the project and, and the Sure. How did you guys got together, yeah. first of all? How long do you guys know each other? Yeah, I guess I'll start. Um, I get, we've known, I've known Tom for only probably like eight months or so, but it feels like 15,000 years mm -hmm. uh, for all the time we spent together. Um, and Portis is a, a developer tool uh, for the regular everyday person. So we built an SDK toolkit, mm -hmm. and we give you our program to you know, an, an Augur and OpenSea and AirSwap. So instead of having for the everyday user to use MetaMask, now you get to use um, an email and password. The problem in the ecosystem is usability. So we want to make it very easy so that your mother, your grandmother, your brother, your father, your cousin can use you know, the blockchain technology and the applications to get the value out of the system. Not worry about what blockchain is, uh, not worry about how difficult it can be, but just enjoy it like they do Web2. Yeah, so let's say like I I don't want, so I don't need to save those 12 words. No, okay. Simple as an email and a two-factor authenticator. So yeah, yeah, so we keep it simple in the sense that we let you log in with your email and password, mm -hmm. but you're still in full control of your private key as the user. Nobody else, not the DAP, not us, has access to it. So you still need those 12 words in case you forget your password. But with that experience of signing with an email and password, you can then log into your same account from your phone, from your desktop, or from your existing browser without installing anything, which is a very familiar experience to users. So we believe that the, pe the person that should work the most is us, the, the, the Web3 providers, then the dev developers. We should make life easy for them as well. And the user should have a, the easiest life ever. And the only thing that they should still kind of learn, in a sense, is the fact that they own their private key. Everything else, gas fees and what is a hex value and addresses and, and everything around surrounding blockchain could be abstracted away and we're slowly abstracting everything so mm -hmm. but it's important for us to be non-custodial meaning we never have access to your private keys okay and then uh, are you guys on mainnet or are you guys using the, the test nets what's what's the purpose if let's say I have a DAP I build something already with solidity how can I plug with with Portis so if if your DAP works with MetaMask it can work with Portis with two lines of code mm -hmm. we give you a standard web3 provider that's for Ethereum so we support Ethereum we support EOS we support Bitcoin and we also support a, a host of EVM compatible blockchains including Matic Network Lightstreams and Help me out here. POA. POA, Matic, Thundercore. Uh, it's quite yeah. a lot. It's quite a lot of support, so. Yeah. Um, uh, scale. Uh, I forgot. Yeah, scale is a big one. Yeah, as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, we don't think, like, just as. Just like users don't care about blockchain and they shouldn't care about blockchain, they definitely don't care which blockchain. So we're looking for that cross-blockchain support because as a developer, you might want to work on several blockchains at once, as some of our dApps already do. And as a user, you should be just simply oblivious to the fact of which blockchain you're, you're working on. And we make, it, uh, we make it so transparent to you because we offer fiat on-ramps, so you're just using dollars. And we let the dApp sponsor the gas fees so the users don't have to worry about paying gas if they still don't even have any money inside. Mm -hmm. So we're just you know, adding all of those features to empower the developers to give their users a great experience, both because they shouldn't defocus from their product, but also because this is its own special world with its own considerations, and just like every other SaaS product yeah. out there, you want to focus on your... Yeah. And if you want to check out some of the dApps that use us currently, you could go to apps.portis.io, and you can see the list of dApps that are integrated with Portis thus far. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second question would be, um, if I'm a user, I don't pay gas fees, who pays for those gas fees? Because we know it's not like totally free, so who's sponsoring the gas? Yeah, of course, there's no free lunches. <laughs> and the, well, in theory, anyone can pay them. Uh, what our approach right now is that the dApps pay them. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you can look at it as the same way as an application pays for its hosting fee or as a customer acquisition cost. Whatever works better. but. It definitely shouldn't be the user, at least not at first. Maybe you can decide that you're sponsoring the user when, when he starts off, and if he goes over a certain amount of usage, then you tell him, okay, you gotta chip in in some way. Mm -hmm. But 
you gotta remove that friction gap that exists right now because we built Cordis, so Scott mentioned that we've known for a long time, uh, but before that, even before Scott joined us, uh, Cordis came about because uh, my co uh, uh, third co-founder, Itai, who's our CTO, we worked together for a lot of years and then we built a DAP as part of a hackathon before we set up Portis. And we won first place in the hackathon, it was really cool, everybody loved it, nobody could use it. Mm -hmm. I had to explain to people they have to install MetaMask, they have to go to an exchange, buy some Ether, understand that they need to withdraw it to their wallet. A lot, a lot of, you're asking a lot from a user and the experience has to be at least as simple as what Web2 is. You know, this is the future and we're telling people to copy paste hex values. It's not gonna fly. Yeah. We're trying to replace something, it has to be at least as easy. So we, we built Portis and we set out to solve that problem, to offer developers something that they can focus on their product and not on the whole onboarding, gas fees, the whole so it's challenge all, It's all about finding this target public. So you're focusing on someone that is not blockchain oriented, but That's they right. want to interact with it yeah. and make life simple now so you could provide the dev developers as well with this public right uh in the app store what are the most wanted uh dabs? is it games is it voting is it like what, what kind of right right yes. now we see a lot of the most usage is coming from finance okay um, from there is going to be marketplaces mm -hmm. um, and then games okay so finance coming from a payment system from investments like what are mostly yeah. mostly decentralized exchanges yes mostly i'd say that's the the highest one mm -hmm. look the, this market is still in its early very early days mm -hmm. so we're still a lot of applications are still testing the water see what works and whatnot and going back to when we started portis we saw that there was like kind of this catch-22 that Nobody was building any mainstream applications, you know, stuff that, not just decentralized exchanges, stuff that can be actually be used by the average person that makes sense, that you're harnessing blockchain, you know, for capabilities you couldn't have otherwise. Nobody's building it for the mainstream because you don't have solution that can onboard the users like Portis. And nobody was building something like Portis because there were no applications like that worth building it for. It's kind of like a chicken and an egg problem. When we believed in the ecosystem, we released this on the, on, you know, on our developers and they really loved it. We got amazing feedback. But these things take time. There's a lot of different solutions that come together to create this perfect storm where we're gonna see applications which are more than just you know uh, exchanging tokens, which are actually about using them. And just now in this hackathon in Berlin, we saw some amazing projects and it seems like we're getting to this critical mass of of, you know, of, of capabilities and tools and libraries. Awesome, awesome. And if you could mention, are there any like partners or groups or projects that are having like synergies with Portis right now? Are you guys closely working with, uh, I don't know, project A or B in terms of that development? I think I'll start with a few and let's start yeah, take over there. So yeah. uh, the first one that comes to mind is uh, another uh, team from Israel called uh, Tabuki, which uh, they released the gas station network, which we're using. The gas station network is that protocol that allows the dApps to sponsor the gas fees that we hooked into. So I think that's a great example. Mm -hmm. Wire. Uh, Wire, obviously, yep. they're, they're the ones that allow us to uh, use their API to have that fiat on-ramp for users so they can put in their US residents, can put in their debit card and can easily buy uh, Ether straight to their wallet with minimal KYC, which means that in a matter of minutes, they have that inside their wallet. We also added something called direct purchase, which allows right now when you buy something with crypto, it's still a complicated experience. Even though we made it pretty simple that you can with a debit card easily buy crypto straight to your wallet, no exchanges and then withdraw and all that. But still, you wanna buy something, you don't have enough funds, you have to go to your wallet, you have to load it up, you have to wait until all the money is inside and then you gotta go back and sign a transaction. If you're thinking about that like in Amazon or something, that's a terrible experience and that wouldn't fly. So we added something called direct purchase where the user can just hit buy. We're pre-signing that transaction, we're loading up his wallet and we will send it automatically. For the user, the experience becomes very, very familiar. And Wire was with us in thinking through this process. Yeah, we designed there was a lot this of together. Back, right, there's a lot of back and forth mm -hmm. with our partner, Wire. Um, another future partner that's not working with us right now, but we're going through the due diligence with them, is Carbon. And Carbon, Carbon enables us to uh, do global credit card purchasing. Uh, so soon we'll be able to offer a global 
credit cards as well. Mm -hmm. And is that available for all over the world? Just a couple of countries? Uh... Most of the world. There's uh, like uh. a couple of countries that doesn't work. Each country has its own limits on how much you could buy and what's the specific KYC you need to do. A little bit more, a little bit less. But overall, most of the most of the world will be supported. Then you can get some of the side chains. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So side chains like POA, like Scale, we have a close relationship with them because this is part of the usability. You know, when you're the problems right now with Ether, the challenges are the speed and the cost. And if you're talking about games that, for instance, that we mentioned, then you want to sometimes have your users moving to the side chain to carry out a lot of small transaction. And then once they have like this meaningful payload of data, then they want to have it on the main chain. So to handle that, actually, we offer the developers some functionality that helps them do that. For instance, change network, which allows the developer to change the network for their user. So right now with MetaMask, the user has to go and set like a custom RPC node. And I yeah, don't see anybody doing something like that. I mean, so yeah. again, offloading the burden from the users to the developers. You know, everyone that we work with, even all the dApps that we power, they're all partners to us. So everyone in the ecosystem is essentially a partner. Um, and we could go through each one individually and tell what we created with them and you know where it got both of us yeah. to the current day but uh, everyone we work with is a partner mm -hmm. awesome guys thank you so much pleasure to have you both here thank you. uh how do they find out about portis is that portis.com portis.io uh, portis app .io. store so yeah. app store yeah. no, android no, 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 no. store mm -hmm. anything similar to that no no so it's not so the whole idea is that we don't ask the user to install anything it's all in their browser we do plan to release later on on our own app a native application but not a dap browser we that the best way to find us is portis.io exactly <laughs> awesome. that. yes and uh last but not least if i'm a dap developer should i connect uh, with uh, with Portis via an SDK package, uh, GitHub, like where is yeah, so how how do I start? The we convention? have our documents at yes. docs.portis.io, um, and then always feel free to reach out to us. We have a Telegram channel, just Portis HQ, um, and we're always happy to answer any questions that someone has. Yeah, or on our Twitter, Portis underscore io. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.